Hello guys, welcome to Redditor's Revenge. Here we post amazing revenge stories daily. And if you want more content like this please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned with us. Moving on to today's first story. I have just lost a friend of 10 years, thought I knew him but what he did to my sister-in-law was not cool. Recently I have been put in a situation that no one wants to be in, having to choose between family and a friend. I do not know whose side to take, because my sister-in-law says one thing, while Josh her ex-husband says something else. He is acting out of character, not even caring that when he divorced her, he left her with not a penny to her name. It all started a couple of weeks ago when my sister-in-law showed up at my mother-in-law's house telling her she needed a place to stay, with her kids. The retirement village my mom-in-law stays at is pretty strict about stuff like this so she could only stay for a few days. When I talked to her she confided in me that her husband kicked her and the kids out with nothing but the clothes on their backs. I asked her why he would do that since they seemed to be having a happy marriage. Her husband was my friend of over 10 years, he actually met her through me and my husband. I have always respected him and held him in high regard, so such behavior led me to be very upset with him. For him to do something like this something big had to have happened, and so my sister-in-law is not telling me everything that I need to know. As soon as I found out what happened I called Josh, who was so upset he told me he did not want to speak to anyone in my family, and that he was done with her. I asked him about the kids and he said he will get full custody of them and leave her with nothing. Not only that but she has not been working for the past three years and depends on him, she says that he has become very verbally abusive towards her and she suspects that there is another woman in the picture. This really scares me as a woman because you can never know what is going on behind your back. One moment you are in a marriage with kids and the next your husband is kicking you out with nothing. The worst thing is before she quit her job to be a full-time housewife, I told her that she needed to have a plan. Anything could happen and he would not be able to work or there could be an emergency. Instead, she used the money she got at work to buy herself a car, saying she might start Ubering other kids from school for extra cash. This was something she did not get to do too often, and I was not sure how much money she was bringing in. We were now stuck with the problem of what to do now that she did not have a job, any money, or a place to stay. So my husband and I talked and we decided that we will allow her to stay with us. I do not know how long we should allow her to stay because we only have a small apartment for us three, with our son as well, and we only have two bedrooms. We have been living in peace though, but the problem I seem to see is that she is having a hard time coming out of it. She got absolutely nothing from him when the divorce was finalized which is pretty funny, because she did not have a job and they have been married for seven years. I have seen Josh several times since then, and each time he refuses to talk to me and tells me that I have chosen sides even though we have been friends for 10 years. He told me that I have no idea his side of the story, and I should be careful who I let stay in my house. To me, it felt like a warning but I do not understand. My sister-in-law is a very good person and has been supportive of me and my husband for years even before she got divorced. She was always available when we needed a last-minute babysitter, never charging us because we are family. From what I have experienced with her she is a kind and honest human, but so is my friend. So, it is really difficult because I do not know what is really happening and I have already lost a friend. It has been days now since she got divorced and I notice that she has been drinking really heavily. I am a bit scared that this will lead her to spiral down. I can see that the new responsibilities that she has been weighing down on her, but I do not know how to support her so she may one day go and get a job. So I just need to know from you guys if you have had a family member or friend go through such a rough divorce and how you have supported them so they can carry on with life. Also, do you think it would be a good idea for me to seek out Josh and ask him about what really happened and why he hates our whole family? It does not sit well with me that he had a sudden character change and was so heartless toward her. It scares me that you think you know someone when you are very far from the truth. Update 1. It has been a month since that post. Thank you all for the advice as well as your insight into the whole matter. So, my sister-in-law has finally stopped drinking and is trying very hard to pull her weight. The problem that I am having is with my neighbor, one neighbor in particular. Before my sister-in-law came along we were already having a very hard time staying with her. She is a young woman who works long hours and has this very loud motorbike. She is also very hard to live with due to the noise that is always coming out of her room at all hours of the day. More than once, I lost some clothes on the washing line or felt as if my money was missing. As we are the only two on the floor I suspected it was her sketchy friends and I confronted her. Ever since then, she has barely greeted me and made it a point to complain about my child, blaming him for stuff he has not done. Earlier this year, she blamed my son for the clogged toilets that caused a problem we had for days. 
She said that she found something that looked like his toy car in there which is an utter load of nonsense, because my son hates toy cars. But other than her I get along with some of my neighbors. I got home today to find my sister-in-law crying. When did I ask her what was going on guess who the culprit was? My neighbor and one of the other girls were downstairs. Ava just asked both of them if they knew any places hiring because she is looking for a job. Both of them said they would look for a place for her, but hours later when she was downstairs she heard them gossiping about her and calling her an alcoholic who was left by her husband, and that no place would hire her. Some people are just inconsiderate. I went and confronted the two of them who told me an utter load of nonsense that they were not mean to her, they just said that the industry they work in might not be the best for someone her age. I feel they had no right to shame her for going through stuff. She has been putting in applications, even for jobs that she is overqualified for, but she is having a hard time. I told the two of them that, I hoped none of them would go through something like this. Update 2. Well, things escalated fast after that because now my landlord wants to discuss increasing my rent because apparently, we have been using much more power and water ever since my sis and her kids started staying here. There are families with more than five people staying here and they pay the same rent as us. I know for a fact that Rochelle, my neighbor was the one who dared to go and complain. My sister-in-law told me that she also saw a scratch on her car that looks a lot like it came from Rochelle's bike. My husband went to talk to her to request that we should all make peace but no no, Miss Rochelle here told us there would only be peace if we moved out. I do not know why she has such a problem with my family, especially since my sister started staying here. Also, something really weird happened today at home. So, I always leave some money for my son to buy some lunch for school, right? I put the money on the living room table as always, but he says he did not see it. No one in my family would take that money, but now I have started to think of months ago when stuff would go missing at home. The worst part is that no one in my family admitted to doing it. I know this place is not safe, not with Rochelle's sketchy friends that are here all the time. I am sure it was one of them who entered my house and took the money. The past few days have been really icy between us, she appears to have a huge grudge against me and my sister. And I know for certain that she was the one who put in the complaint. We already pay more rent than is necessary for this small apartment but now we have to pay much more because of her. Update 3. So the rent thing got sorted out but I think something happened to my sister. She refuses for us to go report him to the police, but there is no denying the marks on her neck. So, it has been a while since I decided that I needed to talk to Josh about what happened, so that I may be able to help her if she was treated badly. I told her that I was going to go and talk to Josh, and my husband agreed that it would be a good idea. Already the kids go to his house once or twice a week but we need her and Josh to be at least on amicable terms for the sake of the kids. So anyway, she beat me to it, today after work she told me she went to his house. She has not gotten paid yet so she needs some money to buy medicine for one of her sons. She does not want to take money from my husband and me, and says that we have been too good to her. She says she went to his workplace to ask him for money for their son, but he thought she was lying and they ended up getting into an argument. And sure enough, she does have marks on her neck that indicate strangling but she does not want to press charges against him. I wanted to go and talk to him, like a person that I respect but now I have lost all respect. His life gets to go on like normal while she suffers, and now he has the nerve to lay his hand on her. She did not say if it was the first time, but some things are starting to come together in my mind. He was probably acting all along and has been hurting her, but we did not know. I am sickened by his behavior and I strongly feel that he should be punished for anything and everything that he has put her through. She told me to let it go, but I will not stand by and let this happen. When my husband found out about this he was fuming. He just took the car and left but I hope he did not go and do something he will regret. I know he is such an impulsive person. Guys, I really do not know what to do. Like the proof is right in front of me, but she does not want to go after him. She was silent when he abused her, divorced her, and left her. She should have tried to fight. Please can I have some ideas of how I can convince her to after him legally. Some good news. Okay, so everything has been a bit doom and gloom at the moment, with my sister-in-law and her husband as well as the living conditions at home. There have also been some arguments between me and my husband. I was fine with her staying with us till she got back on her feet, but there is no denying that we are cramped in this apartment. I am super drained and sometimes very frustrated that she does not want to pull her weight now that she is earning. She started dumping us with the kids and going out with friends, spending the little money that she has. I warned her that her behavior was making it very hard for us to leave in peace, plus she had to focus on rebuilding her life ATM. Anyways her brother does not want to hear anything bad about her and says, I should cut her some slack. So today she ended up moving out. 
The vibe was a bit weird at home, I do not know how to say it. I feel like sometimes she gives me an icy shoulder. She is always interrupting my alone time with my husband because she just wants to spend time with her brother. I have been patient but I am kind of over this. So, when she told us she found a place to stay and is moving out, I was relieved. It is a good place in a safe neighborhood and closer to both her workplace and the kids' school. We have much more space at home now, and it is nice to see that the tension between us is less. Oh, and with regards to her husband, she says he apologized and wants to be more involved in the kid's life. I don't know whether he had apologized yet, but yesterday when I saw him he was not nice at all to me. I had to hold myself from telling him right there what a piece of shit she is. Some very sad news. As I am writing this, we have just come from her house. Someone tried to break in and from the signs, it was her crazy ex-husband. Now I feel so bad for trying to get her to move out too soon, I would not hold it in anymore after that. I called him and told him just what I think of him, and how we will be pressing charges. I told him that she has done nothing to hurt him, this is not the kind and caring Josh that I know. I told him he needs serious help before he does something that he will regret. And can you believe the nerve of that man to make it seem like he was never at her place? He even denied strangling her when she came to ask for money. He claims that he has been giving a monthly allowance for the kids, and even herself even though she does not deserve it according to him. I asked him what it was that she did to him, and he told me that I knew exactly what she did to him and that I was helping her to play her games. He told me she is using me to further her own agenda. I was hella confused after this, what was it that I knew? Why did he not just come right out and tell me what she did? I could not help in this situation if I had known nothing. Trying to ask her was like talking to a brick wall because she knew nothing. Right now, she is sleeping, after crying for hours. She was still shaking when Dave checked up on her a couple of minutes ago. I cannot sleep, not when I know that he dared to invade her personal space like that and threaten her. I sure as hell hope that she was not the one who told him where she lives. Because as soon as she starts letting him into her life, even more than she will go back to him. It will be a vicious cycle, my mother could tell her for free that if an abuser is not done with you, they will never let you leave. My mom paid with her life when my dad kept on abusing her so seeing this happen to Ava breaks my heart. I could not save my mom but I will help out Ava, I did not see the entire truth this whole time. My eyes have been open to the truth and it is ugly, gruesome even. I am left here questioning my judgment. Would you believe me if I told you that, my husband and I were about to go our separate ways after she moved in back with us. We did not see that she was the puppet master pulling the strings. She has been pulling the strings all this time but we were such fools, trusting the so-called victim. When she came back, she came back with a vengeance. She stopped going to work, blaming PTSD and she did not want to pull her weight around the house. It was financially straining for us and when I tried to tell her that she needs to get her act together, she would run to her brother and twist my words until it looked like I was being verbally abusive toward her. She did things she knew would annoy me so that I would lose my temper and tell my husband to kick her out. In turn, she would make comments about how I was not good enough for her brother because I did not support her. So, you must be wondering why I did not throw her out like the trash that she is, and that was because of her compulsive lying. She showed us texts that were supposedly from Josh where he would threaten her. She was an actress, a master manipulator who made sure that we only saw what we needed to. Not only that, but I started to find that some of my clothes were missing as well as my jewelry. So I told my husband about it, telling him I thought she was taking my stuff. And you know what she had to say. That Rochelle was the one taking my stuff so I should confront her. I did no such thing because Rochelle and I are sworn enemies to this day, we do not even greet each other after that messy stunt she pulled. In fact, I was not speaking with any of my neighbors. I am paranoid, not knowing who to trust and who not to. And then yesterday, shit hit the fan. She planned to embarrass me in front of my husband and make me seem like a liar, so that he would divorce me and kick me out as hers had. I told you how my neighbor Rochelle had a motorbike. Her keys went missing, and she had no idea where they were for the whole day. What was worse was that in the boot was some valuable stuff that appeared to be missing. That morning, my sister-in-law asked to carry my bag for me, and not knowing anything she put the keys in there. When I got to work, I found the keys hidden in a very small compartment. I did not know how she thought I was never going to find those keys. When I got home, Rochelle was waiting and she told me to empty my bag. I already knew that the keys were planted in there so I planted them on Ava instead. Rochelle found nothing on me and she left, but I saw that Ava was pissed that she did not find the keys on me. From the way, Rochelle spoke she appeared to think that I was a thief. She spoke about how she tried to be civil with me and did not want to start blaming me but everyone knew that we did not get along and I was still sour over what happened. 
When she could not find those keys on me, I saw that she was more than pissed but that served her right after, what she had just accused me of. As for Ava, I hoped she would notice that the keys were back with her and she would do the right thing. I could have told her brother what she did, but if she lost her brother due to this stupid mistake, then I was afraid that she would run back to that abusive man. Luckily my husband was not there to witness the drama. I had completely forgotten about what happened when hours later she was still not back from fetching the kids from extracurriculars. I had already started making dinner and my husband had just got home and was taking a shower. That was when my other neighbor knocked on my door, screaming words that I could not understand about outside and a fight. When I got outside, I saw that Rochelle had Ava by a wall and she was screaming her face out. At Rochelle's feet was a bag and on top of it the unmistakable shine of keys. Ava screamed for me to help her out when she saw me, she looked like a deer caught in headlights. That was when she let out a scream, Rochelle let her go and she fell onto the ground. I saw the blood seeping out of her shirt and the look of shock on her face. I went up to Rochelle and pushed her away from my sister-in-law asking her why she would do that. It was clear that somehow she found out that Ava stole her bag and the keys. Rochelle later said in a statement to the police that she caught my sister-in-law trying to put the bag back into the boot of her bike. Apparently, that bag had very important stuff that you are better off not knowing about. My husband saw everything, with Rochelle asking her if she was the one responsible for the theft around the apartment. My sister-in-law just lay there, begging her and saying that I framed her. We managed to get her to the hospital, where she could not run away from the truth of what she did. She tried to gain my husband's sympathy but my husband had seen and heard enough. He was very upset that she was lying to me. I could see that he was going to say or do something that he would regret, so I decided to talk to her. I had a whole lecture to tell her about the consequences of her actions and how she had ruined the peace at our house, now it was going to be impossible for her to stay. As soon as he left, her whole mood changed. She looked me dead in the eyes and said, you are the one who is supposed to be lying in here, not me. I felt like the wind had just been knocked out of my lungs. Even now I am still reeling from the hate that was coming from her. Her eyes were full of hate as she went off on me. She asked if I really thought I was going to get away with being the perfect one in the family, after what I did to her. So then I asked what it was that I did to her, that was so horrible she did not think she could forgive me. What was so bad that she felt she wanted to ruin my life. She told me that I was the reason that she got divorced from her husband. She told me that I did not cover for her when I should have months ago. Apparently, her husband suspected her of cheating so one day when she did not come home, he asked me and I just told him the truth that she had been cancelling plans with me for weeks saying that he was sick. To me he replied that maybe she went to get some medicine and then we were done, I completely forgot about that conversation. So she says I should just have lied and that she was with me and not asked any questions. Her husband caught on that day and kicked her out. So she decided to come to stay with me and ruin my life because she has it in her head, that it was my fault. My husband answered from behind me that she got herself into this mess, and even if I knew the truth it would not have been right for me to lie to my friend, and compromise our friendship. She tried to argue but he told her we knew she was responsible for the theft at home and for trying to get me into trouble. He could not forgive her for what she did to me. But that is not all, for I went to Josh and told him everything. I had a feeling that the abuse story was a lie for her to stay in my house and ruin my marriage. Josh told me he did not want the details of the divorce to come out, because he was so embarrassed about what happened. I asked him for permission to share this because he has decided to come forward as a victim of abuse. Yes, she has been emotionally abusing him, the furthest she has gotten physical with him is scratching and biting when they argued. He has never touched her or stalked her, she has done all this to herself. The past 24 hours have been a whirlwind, I need to sort some stuff out and process all this. We'll try and give an update shortly. Update 4, hopefully the last one. Sorry, I took so long to bring an update. Yes, I know there are so many questions that need to be answered. I wanted everything to settle down instead of giving an update for every small thing that has happened. First off, my husband and I decided to move. Rochelle was charged but the charges did not stick. She wanted to countersue, Ava for theft but the whole thing just turned into a big mess. We decided to find another place to stay otherwise things would have been awkward there. I was scared as well because of the side of her that I saw. Last I heard she was not completely off the hook because the contents of her bag were being investigated. Josh finally got the courage to expose her to the world and we have been very supportive of him. We all realized that she manipulated us to serve only her selfish needs but for others out there to be safe, we need to be open. There are a lot of people out there in the world doing the same to people they claim to care about and get away with it. It is worse when it is a wife who abuses a husband because instead of support the man gets laughed at. 
Anyways, she has been stripped of custody of the kids until she proves herself not to be a danger to people. She is now supposed to go to therapy, and while I do not have the details of that, Josh did confide in me that she has a compulsive lying disorder. Hopefully, she gets help for that because she needs it. Throughout all of this, my mother-in-law knew nothing. There was no way we could have stressed an old woman who wants to rest. She was very heartbroken to hear of all her daughter has been up to but she says she feared Ava would do something like this. A mother knows her child but sometimes it is not very easy to admit that one's child might have a problem. As for us and her, there is no love lost. My husband and I want nothing to do with her. We have decided to get a restraining order against her. I do not feel safe, I get very jumpy at times and I feel like I cannot trust anyone at all. I have to tell myself sometimes that a person is just being nice to me and that they do not want to hurt me. What hurts me a lot is that the children were exposed to this at such an early age. I hope that it does not affect them too much in the long run. I know it was difficult for me to properly heal after what happened with my parents. For now, it seems there is nothing more that is going to happen. Things are not 100% okay but maybe they will be. Thanks for all your advice and insight, now it is time to move on. Now, here is the end of our today's story, and I hope you enjoyed this dramatic revenge story. What a monster Ava is, she cheats in her relationship and holds OP responsible for its demise. She is a danger to the kids as well, so I hope she didn't regain custody. Guys, I want to know your thought about this story in the comments section, and if you had similar entitled sister-in-law stories, please share it in the comments section. And, before you move to the next story, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to remain updated on more fantastic stories.